Blues fans, how are we all doing? Hope everyone's well. Uh, <laughs> Rotherham, that was as dominant a performance I've seen in a blue shirt since since Coventry last season. But under Chris Davis, for me, this was his most dominant performance. You could possibly argue the Wrexham game. Uh, I think the clean sheet just makes it look a little nicer on paper, though, doesn't it? 2-0 away is a, that's, that's, that's a brilliant scoreline. And I'm not going to lie, guys, I, I did call that. Mystic Mac, I did call that. I did say 2 now. So, uh, on the pre match video for Peter Brett, get your bet 365 out and listen to what the man has to say because I'll win you some money. Uh, I won no money on the weekend, so don't worry about that. Uh, yeah, Iwata, Stansfield, I, I feel like they're becoming. It, it, it's, it's weird, you know, having shots from deep with a central defensive midfielder and I was one of the ones last season that would have said I'd keep Sunic you know and this is no disrespect to Sunic but I was a bit more in the boat of maybe he'll do a job in League One he, the, the stuff we get from Pake and Iwata is unbelievable just to follow up the shot that Stansfield took and go, think, go on I'll have a dig myself and the thing that no one really mentioned about his goal is the referee got in the way so he actually had to curve his run it went a straight run up. He kind of had to come around the referee and then into the path of the ball. Um, brilliant goal, exactly the same. One on his left, one on his right. Uh, <laughs> long way it continue. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of seeing Dix from outside the box and stands for a second goal. If you know anyone that watches football, you have a good understanding of how difficult that is. If you play football semi regularly, you really know how difficult that is. It's coming in at this angle. He's caught the ball on the bounce with the side of the foot to send the keeper. And he's only dealing with like 45% of the goal because of the angle he's at. Absolutely brilliant. Um, cool, calm, composed, man. To see our team have enough to back themselves and have the confidence in themselves. A, a lot of times as a fan, we know what they can do. And so it frustrates you when they almost don't believe in themselves. But our players, man, you, they're almost a little arrogant. And at times in the season, I've been a bit... Uh, sceptical of that but when it's happening up front and our players aren't scared to have a shot they aren't scared to try a step over bring it back go around a man it just creates this this, this fear of because when it works it gives it gives confidence to the rest of the team they go God, look, look what Hanson's just done on the wing yeah I'm going to try a little something over here and if it don't work I've got, I'll back myself to win it back and move the ball on and we'll try something different and it, it's weird, and I feel like we have to set that you know sort of the same conversations every week. That you pinch yourself a little bit, and you think this is blues. This is, and from the outside looking in, you think, oh, you League One, you found your level. But we know you can't. A League One team doesn't dominate League One teams like this. This is a Championship ready team. When we go into January, the January transfer window, I don't necessarily think we'll buy anyone, or nor do I necessarily want or need anyone in the January transfer window I'm, I'm slightly more actually concerned about keeping the players we've got and I don't think we'll lose any any in January but in the event we do get promoted to the championship I do hope we give Paik a new contract because I'm sure he's got two years so you don't want to lose him for peanuts do you know what I mean but even going up next season Yes, they'll, they'll go out and spend money, and yes, we'll sell players. I imagine players coming back from Lunar Tyler Roberts will move on. Um, so we might buy a few. I'm hoping we don't sell any, because I love this team. I feel like I, you guys, we, we've said in the comments, I've bonded with this team. I love these players. There's no one that I dislike. There's no one, like last season, for example, there was players that I loved in there, but there's players that I just done my head in. I'm like, I don't want to see you in the lineup. I don't want to see you on the bench. When I look, when I laugh and I look at our lineup, I don't know about you guys, I laugh. Jesus Christ, look at that! And then I look at the bench and I look, oh, look at the bench. I just think, I mean, we'd have a laughing about it. We are with the family around on Saturday, or all, all the Blues fans. And we were just saying, man, what what is going on? Never in my lifetime did I think I'd see it. And I'm only 29, but it's unbelievable. Uh, yes, yeah, second half, it looks like we took our foot off the gas a little bit. So when you take your foot off the gas away from home. There is things to criticise about that, but to just put in a shift like that, see out the wind, clean sheet all round, happy days, even probably saved a bit of energy in the legs. Um, I, I like I liked Lyndon Dykes starting. I know a few people were against it. I originally thought it was to get back the height and the build. I did say 
in the pre-match that I thought Lyndon Dodds would play. But apparently it's because Alfa May was suffering a bit of an illness, so he only come on in the last stages of the game. Yes, he didn't score, and I don't even think he had a shot, but the space he created in beyond, he was a physical presence. He took up space, people had to mark him, he's a big dude. I, I liked him, I thought he'd done exactly what you want a striker, because you know Stansfield's going to score. You know the others are going to have a dig and a pop at goal. So there isn't a lot of pressure on you to score you know, and especially when the first two have already gone in, you can almost play with a bit more freedom, a bit more, I've oh, let me try this and see if this works. And You know, so I was happy with Lyndon Dykes. I, I would have loved to have seen him score. Um, I can't see him starting many games, if I'm completely honest. Not ahead of Alfie May and Stansfield, because I do still think Alfie May gives you more off the ball. And uh, you've got to take your hat off to Alfie May, because he's got to be frustrated. You think, I've scored every game in the league. This Stansfield kick comes along. You know, text the highlight, text the, you know, the credit. But they seem to have a good relationship because Alfie May is still working on J so sort of still scoring goals. I would like to see Alfie May get one or two, just for his sake. I just want to see him rewarded for his efforts. You know, because as a striker, you're always going to be happier if you if you, if you win and you've contributed to it. That's just it. So you want your strikers to be inherently selfish and a little bit arrogant, don't you? And you can sense that from Alfie May. So for him to be rewarded for that, it would give him that onus to go on and keep doing it. Um, I've, I've just noticed it's just popped up on my laptop the Blues women won 4-0 last night um, it just makes me think under 18s under 21s the men's team the, the, the women's you know when you just see it comes up on your feed under 21s win 2-0 men's team 2-0 women 4-0 under 18s won the cup and you just think God, what a good time to be at the Blues man. what a good time to be a fan Jesus um, so I'm, I'm to Peterborough on the weekend uh uh, no, sorry, yeah, home, home to Peterborough. I thought that was away. I got the fixtures mixed up. I thought this was the away one, and Boxing Day was the home one because I wanted to get my dad along, but apparently it's it's home this weekend, which is a nice surprise because I had it completely mapped out wrong. So I'll be at the game for that one. Um, and then that tonight, uh, Huddersfield play Blackpool at Blackpool away to Huddersfield. It's a lot to ask of Blackpool, but it'd be nice for them to get a win because I think we're four points ahead. Huddersfield, maybe seven. I think it's four points. No, we're four points ahead. Yeah, that's right. And they're, they're decent. Do you know what I mean? We got them coming up. So if we can get, if Blackpool can get some up from that game, even if it's just a point, just to halt them in their tracks, then that that's all good for us. Uh, there's a few. There's a few teams playing this week, and I think Huddersfield is kind of like the biggest one for us. I, I think the only teams we really really need to be keeping an eye on this season are Huddersfield and. Uh, Wrexham and maybe Stockport maybe Stockport but pick, pick it up I, I quite like watching Stockport though I find them one of the more enjoyable teams to watch in the league just because it's a bit it reminds me of uh, Leeds and the Marcelo Bielsa you know it's just one plan it's just attack and then when you've scored you try again just try again and if you can see first just try and score it. it's just very attacking football so if you ever get bored give the Stockport's game a watch man they're alright uh Look, I haven't said much in this video. It's not exactly an in-depth breakdown analysis of the game. We, we, we kind of just dominated all areas. I thought Hansen looked very good. Hansen looked confident. He kind of gives you more more of that direct attack. I was surprised not to see Yakuyama come on. Uh, you know, but in Chris Davis we trust. This is the weird thing as well. You can't really argue with any decisions Chris Davis is making. You just got to trust him, ain't you? Uh, I thought Emil Hansen looked good. I thought Thor what his first touch his ability to move the ball on that little dink into Stansfield that looked like a, a like an L1 triangle L1 Y chip over the top it, it didn't look like there was much to it so easy to take and trap the ball and you know that's what I've noticed this season I said them is not only have the ability to pass the ball move it on quickly but they've got that foresight where they can play it at the direct the right speed the weight of the ball and it's easy for the you know uh, for our players to trap in tight spaces and move it on again. It's all good licking a ball at someone if it's shin height and you can't control it, which is what we saw a lot last season. But this, the little daisy cutters, easy to move on with the side of the foot. It's just them little things, and Chris Davis would have mentioned this. Don't send it to the man, send it where he's going to be. And how many times have we seen that with the balls over the top? I thought Christian Clara looked unbelievable. I thought Ben Davies looked very good. I was very nervous of Ben Davies. And how much of an assurance does it mean? You know how much we love Bielik. We love that man to death. But to see him miss again, and ironically keep the first clean sheet of the season, 
it again reiterates the quality and depth that we have coming off the bench that we didn't miss. I I would probably go ahead and say Chris Bielik is our most important player. For me, I know everyone will maybe say Stansfield. For me, Bielik's our most important player. And for us to miss him in an away game, a dodgy, tough away game at Rotherham, and us be fine. What, what more can you say? What more of a compliment is there to a team? Um, guys, it's been a pleasure keeping up with you. I didn't want to keep you too long this day. I find these bite-sized chunk 10-minute videos are probably the most digestible. Something you can watch on your lunch break, do you know what I mean? And generally, uh, I'm going to start releasing the videos around 6 o'clock on the night. Because I, I was I was thinking the other day, what could I do to improve my views? And whenever I get home from work, I usually get home about 5 and I'll put something on the TV around 6. So I'll start dropping these videos around 6 o'clock on the night, just so you've got a time frame of if you're a, a fan of the videos and you enjoy watching them. If there's ever going to be a new one, I'm going to start releasing them at 6 o'clock in the night time, just so you guys know. Obviously, uh, the pre-match ones usually come on a Friday. The post-match ones usually come on a Sunday, sometimes a Monday, just depending on how long my night shift is on the Saturday night. Uh, and any just bonus little videos will drop during the week, but they'll all usually be at 6 o'clock the day before or after a game. So, uh, guys, take it easy. It's a pleasure to speak to you. Um, drop some in the comments if you want to ask a question or... Or just have a chat in the comments. Oh, you know me, I love it. If you go back to my videos, I'm always in the comments. So feel free to drop a comment. I'll 100% see it, read it, and reply. Uh, I'll see you in there, guys. Take it easy. Have a great day, and keep right on.